Hey guys, welcome back. I've got Pennywise here with me today and I want to show you how to build an incubator for under $85. About a week ago when feeding the house snakes, I opened up one of their bins to give them their food and I found them on it. She laid six eggs, one of them being a slug, the other five look healthy. And luckily at the moment, we weren't incubating any ball python eggs. So I was able to lower the temperature on my main incubator to 84 degrees to incubate these eggs here. Now ball python eggs incubate at a higher temperature. So that means we're gonna need a second incubator for any house snake eggs. Hey guys, if you want more videos like this one, please make sure you like subscribe hit that notification bell and we'll get back at it now we will have two house sick clutches at the most this year so i didn't want to go with anything too big but i also want to get something that we can maybe grow in case we decide to do more house snake clutches in the future so on facebook marketplace i was able to find a old wine cooler or beverage cooler they're called sometimes with a glass opening front for 40 dollars. this should work perfect i'm going to show you how to turn this into an incubator so let's take a look at the beverage cooler this one's about three feet tall two feet wide and we want braided shelving so that the egg boxes can lie on top of these and then i have a couple of fans that we're going to run in here to circulate air around so we don't get anything stagnant or hot spots let's get started start we're going to take out all the shell and then we're going to need some heat tape which i purchased from reptile basics i got a 12 inch wide by three foot long strip with the cord already pre-attached and then i'm going to use aluminum foil tape to attach it to the back of this wine cooler See, we got that flex watt tape in there, it's taped up at the top, and then I just follow the contour of the back. Most of these coolers install the compressors on the back side under this, so these are going to be dented into the cooler, so you got to kind of go around that. Otherwise, I've seen it done, I'm to go down around the bottom and back up the other side. I decided to go with a wider tape to get more wattage, more heat. I'm going to finish taping around the, the edges of this. To secure it in better and then we'll move on to the next step so now what we're gonna do is try to poke a hole through the back upper corner here so that we can run our electrical cord for the heat tape out and then our thermostat probe in i'm just gonna drill a hole, a hole we're gonna aim for is right around here we want something big enough to get this plug through safety first make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and then make sure you've got permission to use power tools one thing you have to be careful of is this edge right here is the coil for the cooling now that we're not using the cooling but there may be coolant in there and you don't want to release that so i'm gonna try to stay to the left of that Later on, we'll fill that hole in with great stuff foam, and then we'll vacuum this up. We got a nice clean hole there. Let's make sure this fits. It might take a little bit of water in that out. On to the next step. All right, we were able to kind of widen that hole out a little with a smaller drill bit going around the edges there. To work it outwards so we can fit that plug through. The inch and a half was just a tad too small. But now that fits through perfect. So we've got our heat tape run out. And we've got everything cleaned up. I used the shop vac. Now there's foam inside the insulation of this. So when you do drill this, it's going to create a mess. So be prepared for that. Do it in a space where you won't mind foam particles flying around. The thermostat we're going to use is a VE200 on this one. I'm just going to leave it on top. We're going to run that probe right through the hole that we drilled from the outside in. And once we get our racks back in there, we'll zip tie it to the middle rack to get that temperature reading from the middle of the incubator. We've got the probe here. That's our hole that came out the back. We are just going to push that right through and here she is. So she'll sit somewhere around here once everything's said and done. For now we've got all our electrical running in and out. Now you can add lights to this if you want. It's going to increase the cost a little. I decided not to. Next is going to be installing the fans I have to circulate air in here. If you don't have fans, your heat's going to rise. You're going to stay warm in the top area and you're going to have a lower temperature at the bottom. So the plan is put one fan attached to this little front area. We've got that area that is smaller at the bottom, which isn't going to be usable for incubation. Our first shelf will probably sit a few inches above 
where this heat tape is on this back shelf. So for this area, I'm hoping to use it for the fans. And we'll have one pointing up on this side and one pointing down on this side. And then we'll run that electrical out that same hole to be able to power it. They are computer server fans I got off Amazon for about 20 bucks for the pair. And they just run off a USB power. They do not come with this power supply. So you will have to provide something for that. I've used these in the past. They work well, so that's why I went with them. So let's attach those. So the logo is pointing where you want your flow of air. So like I said, one will go up, one will go down. I'm gonna point the sides with the wires inward. That way it's easier to run these out the back and conceal it. All right, so we've got those fans mounted. Close up look here. See they're a few inches off. Nothing special. Just get them zip tied in to this piece here. We should get airflow below above and hopefully circulate that around. It'll work out well because we have those wire shell. I will clip these zip tie tails that are hanging out. Let's run our USB wire for these computer fans right out the back here. Plug that in and let's test run it. These are running quiet. They're running perfect. We've got no vibration, no rattling. So I think this will work well. And we'll just have to kind of maybe tape this wiring up to the side later to make it look a little cleaner. See how this fits in there once the racking gets in. The last step is going to be putting in the shell. We want to go a little above that heat tape back there. So now we will zip tie our probe to the middle of this middle rack on the bottom side of it so we don't interfere with it when we put egg boxes in there. And that should give us a good general idea of what the temperature is in the middle of this incubator. And that's where we want to kind of control and hopefully that fan helps regulate that temperature throughout. Here's a few finishing touches I put on it. I did zip tie these wires together so they're not sitting on that heat tape and then I did tape that wiring up going up the back so it looks a little bit neater. Get these set up so you should be able to get two egg boxes on each shelf. The only thing left to do is put that foam in. I did not have that handy. It was out of it. The can I had was dried up for some reason so I'm gonna go get that. I'm at my local hardware store and I wanted to get something to attach to the back to organize all the wire power switch or something like this so I can plug in all the wires in the back and then all I have to worry about plugging in for the incubator is one cord into the wall. And about 24 hours since we finished building this and we're sitting at 84 degrees on our thermostat and it appears that that is heating right where we want it. Right now we're going to transfer our house snake eggs over from the other incubator into this one. I'm gonna put those right over the probe. Hopefully that allows enough airflow still. And then we'll put this one down here and we'll keep an eye on it. See how it regulates. A few other things. You can see we covered up that hole in the back there with the aluminum tape. And I'll show you the back side of it where it came through right here. This is the, you can see the outline of it. What I ended up using instead of great stuff called Green Guard project panel. I just cut off a little square there and shaved it down to the right size because it would not leave a glue-like substance on the wires hardened on it. And then with a Velcro strip, I attached a power outlet to the back. So then everything from inside the incubator plugs into the power strip, including that USB for the fans. And I just have one wire going out to the wall. We've got her all finished up. Got the thermostat on. Now this will be a great first incubator for anybody out there who's trying to get started in breeding. If you want to see an emergency incubator out of a cooler for a much lower price point, check this video out in the links here. If you want to see more videos from us, check these out here.